Uh-oh, not this again. An r slash elementary teachers, Vin Venture asked, can anyone explain to me why this was marked wrong? It seems that she is a mother trying to get some clarification on why her child's work was marked incorrect here. The child used repeated addition, six plus six plus six, to show how they represent six times three, of course, getting 18. The teacher seemingly gave no credit and said it's supposed to be three Three plus three plus three, six times, not six plus six plus six, three times. The OP said, I'm not mad or anything, just confused. I mean, it's the same thing, right? Isn't it useful for kids to know that multiplication is the same whichever order the numbers are in the equation? Personally, I think three sixes makes a lot more sense to add together than six threes. Plus, when I read six times three, I read it six three times. Is there a reason for being so strict about the order, especially when they're just teaching strategies, so ultimately they can pick one that works for them? Let's answer these rapid fire. It's the same thing, right? I would say no, since the answer is supposed to be an expression, it's not the same thing. There are two different expressions that happen to have the same value. Isn't it useful for kids to know that multiplication is the same whichever order the numbers are in? Yes. When I read six times three, I read it as six three times. You might read it that way, and a lot of people certainly agree, but people could read it in all sorts of ways. For example, we're often told that in words, the multiplication symbol means of, like half of 10 is equal to five. Or of course, six of three, which would mean six copies of three. And then really the key question, is there a reason for being so strict about the order? I'd say yes, there is a reason, which we'll discuss, but whether or not that reason justifies losing all points on a question like this is where people will certainly disagree. The more information about what's been taught in this class we have, the better we could judge how fair this grading is. It would help if we could see the whole worksheet. We can at least see, though, that there are multiple representations of multiplication being tested, which is great. Interestingly, when doing the repeated jumps on a number line, the student seems to be conceiving of multiplication the way the teacher wants. Three times five is three jumps of five. And then with the rectangular array, you have perhaps the easiest way to see that order of multiplication doesn't matter. This looks to be representing three times eight. I can't help but wonder how the conversation would go if the student said, okay, three times eight, so we've got eight and eight and another eight. And then the teacher says, no, Daryl, that's all wrong. You've drawn out eight groups of three when you were supposed to draw three groups of eight. And Daryl says, no, look, I did do three groups of eight. How do you settle that dispute? However, these dramatic battles might take place between the student and teacher, it's clear that they're in the midst of an in-depth introduction to multiplication. And it's no surprise that the grading on this question has got many people dismissing the teacher as pedantic and stupid, just like what happens every single time this topic comes up. One person reposted it in r slash math education saying, exhibit A, for why math achievement in the US is so bad, I just don't even. Meanwhile, enlightened bums said on the original post that this is just the sort of thing that makes people hate math. It's pedantic and arbitrary in a way that will make kids hate math. It's not teaching concepts, it's teaching that math is a series of incantations that don't make a logical sense. It's a dumb trick, like saying that technically we could say that 28 minus 43 really is negative 25. Like you see a lot from beginners because in an alternate literacy system that could mean negative two times 10 plus one times five, so it's right. If you wanted to make the point the teacher's trying to make by marking that answer wrong, you create a real world context, such as Mr. Enlightened Bum gives three apples to six students each that removes the ambiguity. You don't arbitrarily say the order matters for the representation in the abstract. Wait just a minute here. 28 plus 43 minus 25 minus two plus 10 plus one plus five plus three plus six. One, five, three, six. I knew it, as foretold in the prophecy. I understand Enlightened Bum's point. The real-world situation of two kids, each with four chocolate bars, is certainly distinct from the situation of four kids, each with two chocolate bars. Even though each situation involves eight chocolate bars, they are meaningfully distinct. And if there was some context like that, then I don't think anyone would argue with the teacher for taking off points if the student got the reference 
representation wrong for a real world situation. Spooky Mama said simply, the teacher wants to make sure that kids understand multiplication as groups of. So if you read the problem saying groups of for the multiplication symbol, the two problems are different. The teacher of course has said that the answer should be six times three is six groups of three. Going to Disneyland said it can also be written as six parentheses three, which is more clear to me that it's six sets of three, I don't think that notation is going to win over any third graders or their teachers. Mustard Slush echoed a sentiment similar to that of Enlightened Bum, saying both are right and that should be how it's taught. This student does show conceptual knowledge of multiplication. To be this pedantic over the precision takes away from the core concept of understanding that multiplication is repeated addition. Okay, there's a lot of hot takes being cooked up here, but let's return to the key question, which is in regards to why a teacher would be so strict about about the order of multiplication. There's also a second question hidden underneath this, which is if the order does matter, which order is what? Is six times three, six groups of three, or three groups of six? Is it totally arbitrary, or is there a good reason to decide on one over the other? Let's start with an attempted defense of the teacher being so strict about the order. And on this front, I think Spooky Mama here raises a great point that might not be apparent to people who haven't taught little epsilons before. They say that the students will learn the commutative property later, but a lot of kids find working either way quite confusing using when the concept is first introduced. So many people are saying that the teacher's grading is ridiculous because order of multiplication doesn't matter, but do you think it would be prudent for the teacher to just neglect the order of multiplication themselves? Think about how this is presented to a student learning multiplication for the first time. For a student like that, simple addition is a problem. Just like for a calculus student, a simple derivative is a problem. But then suddenly you've got multiplication, which is repeated additions. What used to be one exercise now needs to be repeated for a single problem. When you teach the students a multiplication method, like doing repeated additions on a number line, think about the confusion and friction that could result from saying, okay, to do three times five, we make three jumps of five on the number line, or five jumps of three, it doesn't matter, you could do it either way. You can see this same sort of friction created when a calculus student with poor algebra skills watches you slide things in and out of a fraction. Does it matter how these things are written? Not exactly, but that just makes it more confusing to somebody who doesn't understand the properties being exploited in the multiple representations. If they don't understand why these things are equal, they'll be unlikely to carry out these same sort of manipulations on their own responsibly. By just saying it doesn't matter, you're giving students learning about this an additional point of friction to choose which way to go about the computation. And I think we can agree that the method of doing an operation should be the focus before communicating the nice properties that the operation happens to have. Particularly because this convenient property of commutativity that the order doesn't matter is a very important one. And to teach this important property, it's important that you don't trivialize it. Instead of saying, oh, two times three, three times two, doesn't matter, they're the same thing. You should say, look, Two times three is three plus three. Three times two is two plus two plus two. What do you notice about these two numbers? Well, they happen to be equal. Is this always the case? And then you can explore reasons why it may or may not be. You can give students the opportunity to discover and attempt explaining this important property. But to do this at all, you need to distinguish between the two orders in the first place. Not because they're totally different in every way, but because they are different in some way, but they happen to be the same in one very important way. I've always got the sense that a lot of people don't really understand the associative property, and I think that's because it's often trivialized. To understand the associative property, we need to understand the non-triviality of an expression like one plus three plus five. 
If my teacher says, well, just add all the numbers up, it doesn't matter how you do it, well, sure, that's true, but then they're not going to have an easy time communicating the associative property to me. There should be some question about how this is evaluated, because addition is an operation that's done on two numbers at a time. The fact that we have three numbers here makes this potentially ambiguous. We can only add two at a time, which means we either need to do one plus three first, or we need to do 3 plus 5 first. The associative property tells us that in fact it doesn't matter how we do it, we're going to get the same result. Which importantly means the expression 1 plus 3 plus 5 itself is not ambiguous. It doesn't need any parentheses because adding parentheses wouldn't change its value. I think I've made my point enough. The very first step to teaching important properties is to not trivialize them. And of course, we can't trivialize commutativity because not every operation has it. Right next to multiplication in many students' mind is division, which of course is not commutative. In the case of division, order definitely matters. Now, I'm not saying I agree with the teacher apparently giving no points for this answer. That would depend on how long and how clearly expectations have been set in class, but I don't have any problem at all with requiring students to interpret multiplication in a particular way according to the order. After all, we can't make a point that the two different orders are equal unless we first establish that there are two different orders that may or may not be equal. Then the other interesting question is if we'll accept, at least for a time, that order matters, is there a good reason to regard six times three as six groups of three, like the teacher has, or is it really just arbitrary preference? Intuitiveness arguments aren't really valid because they're totally subjective. Adam might think, obviously, six times three is six three times, but Bo might think six times three is obviously six of three, which really just leaves us to look at cultural and historical precedent. In the last year, YouTuber Mind Your Decisions has made at least two videos on exactly this sort of problem. I think in general he makes a lot of videos similar to mine, except he's seemingly self-conscious about his handwriting, and probably a bit shy about his copy of Euclid's Elements, if he even has one. I'll bet he's also embarrassed about his meager and unimpressive calculator collection. But anyways, in his last video on this sort of problem, he cited some great examples of historical and cultural precedent. And all of these sources specifically support the teacher's interpretation of six times three being six groups of three. There is the United States Common Core Standards for third grade, which explicitly says they should interpret products of whole numbers, like five times seven, as the total number of objects in five groups of seven objects each. If the OP is in the United States, then that might be one reason the teacher is enforcing the multiplication this way. Mind Your Decisions pointed out that this is also how Khan Academy teaches it. It's how it's written in Wikipedia's page on multiplication, and going back thousands of years to 300 BC, we can even find it in Book 7 of Euclid's Elements, the legendary textbook on geometry. This is my travel copy that I take with me wherever I go, so let's flip to book 7 and look at definition 15. Ah, oh, God, so many editions of the elements only include the first six books. I am really fed up with the censorship here. What happened to the rest of the elements, and why is it so rarely printed? Okay, well, here it is from the Clark University page. Book 7, definition 15. A number is said to multiply a number when the latter is added as many times as there are units in the former. So when we look at 6 times 3, the latter number, 3, should be added added six times, just as the teacher did. If Euclid says it, honestly, that is all I need. If Euclid wasn't enough, you could also check out chapter three of Euler's book on algebra. And here he says a plus a is the same as two times a. You can see where he's going with this. Four times a, that's four groups of a. So Euler agrees with the teacher. So yeah, that's a pretty thorough demonstration of the precedent. For what it's worth, I'll add the Department of Education in the UK says that 
students should know that multiplication of two numbers can be done in any order. Now, some of you might think, ah, the UK actually gets it. That flies in the face of what the teacher is doing here. But again, I would argue that you can't make a big point about order not mattering unless you show there are two different orders that could not matter in the first place. But anyways, that's a 10 times more thorough of a discussion than needs to be had about this issue. For those of you who think the teacher is being way too pedantic do you think there's any situation in which the teacher would be justified in removing all of the students' points for this specific error? Like, if she had made her expectations sufficiently clear in class, would you be okay with it then? Or do you think, no matter the circumstances, this is just an unreasonably cruel and harsh grading? Let me know what you think down in the comments, and if you're curious, the original poster of this thread seemed to be made content by the explanations of those who responded. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep the cable cut and unsort the table. If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal. I wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded. Hate the odds that I calculated. Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet. Faded. Psychosomatic habits, why you so, so.